Hello, in this video, I'll be showing you how to make your own no pipped nasal spray. I did uh, do a lot of experimentation to get this right, and it's not as simple as throwing in some no pipped in some water and shaking it. I tried that, but there are uh, problems that you encounter, mainly that the no pip doesn't fully dissolve, and then you get uneven dosing if you try that method. And over here, I have some distilled water. You need to make sure that you use distilled water, especially it's better if you use deionized de distilled water because the ions, bacteria, and other substances react with the no pept pe peptide and ends up um, destroying the peptide. So for best shelf life, you want to use uh, deionized distilled water. You need to use also a preservative. You can either use uh, benzyl alcohol, but it's pretty hard on the nose. I mean, if you use it like occasionally or once, dose like once, uh, one time in each, each nostril, it's doable, but otherwise you go, you're going to have a lot of uh, bad side effects. I don't recommend to use uh, benzyl alcohol, but if you want to, you can go that route. Otherwise, benzyl alcohol, um, uh, benzyl alcohol, is good if you want to make a sublingual, um, if you want to use the no pept spray or solution sublingually, okay? Otherwise, I recommend using uh, this type of preservative, methyl paraben. It's a proven preservative. It's used for a lot of um, uh, cosmetics and such. And the Russians, they put 0.1% uh, of uh, methyl paraben in their CMAX uh, drops. So I would um, do the same for my uh, no pep spray. So I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. But let me go over the equipment that you'll need. Other than the uh, distilled water, you'll also need some rubbing alcohol or something to sterilize all the equipment that you'll be using. Okay, if you're going to reuse the bottle, I would suggest shaking some of this uh, rubbing alcohol in here and spraying it a few times uh, to sanitize the whole bottle and then wa um, washing with water the whole thing and then spraying a few times with the water to get rid of the um, isopropyl alcohol. Okay, so this is for sterilization, as for sterilizing the equipment. The next thing that you would need is a spray bottle. You can get one of these spray bottles here from the dollar store. You can get one of these for, uh, from the dollar store and empty out the um, you know nasal relief solution they put in here. Now the thing is, uh, opening these bottles are not convenient. As you can see, I used some pliers to open these up without a preservative. I find that they last for three days, but I don't recommend not using preservative. That's a bit dangerous since you're going to spray this right into your nose. Okay. Uh, but if you get something um, that's like uh, that you can unscrew, that's a lot more convenient. Okay, like these ones you can unscrew. Okay, and you can get these on online, but they'll be more expensive, of course. Uh, uh, you also need a Erlen Meyer flask. I would um, or any other vessel that's non-metallic because in the end what you can um, for mixing the solution you will uh, you will end up using a magnetic stirring device so you will need a Erlen Meyer flask you'll need a stir uh, magnetic stirring bar and you can maybe go ahead and either make yourself a magnetic uh, stirring device by um, attaching one of these uh, PC fans and on the other side of this PC fan is a single um, hard drive magnet. The only problem with using hard drive magnets is that it's not going to make the most symmetrical uh, magnetic field since they uh, typically have a U-shape. I can go ahead and show you that. So typically hard drive magnets, I love to use them for putting things up, but they don't have a symmetrical shape. And the magnetic field that they make isn't symmetrical either. So that would be an issue if you end up uh, doing it my way. I would recommend rather on either side of the fan to put like one magnet here, one magnet here of uh, a neodymium magnet. So some additional equipments that you'll need is a syringe to extract the benzyl alcohol. 
from the bottle if it's uh, in the vial format of course if you're using methylparaben then you won't need a syringe you also need the no pept powder and uh, i find that no tropics depot is a trustworthy vendor you can get it from other places online but you need to make sure that the vendor is uh, trustworthy and, and that he's reliable you'll need a microscope and you'll also need a millimeter scale also i got it from no tropics depot so a very important uh, step in order to get the dosage right is to measure how many sprays that your nasal sprayer sprays but you want to make sure that um, you measure the amount of water that you want to put in here although it says 15 milliliters here this can easily um, uh, hold up to 20 milliliters of water so go ahead and measure how much water you put in here once you've done that then you what you have to do next is you keep spraying like this you fully depress it like this and you keep spraying until the uh, the bottle empties okay and you count how many sprays along the way so i personally found that for 20 milliliters of solution i got 175 sprays out of this bottle so if i wanted each spray to can to contain one milligram of no pept powder i would add 175 milligrams of no pept to the solution okay so i decided i'm going to make 40 milliliters of no pept solution for 20 milliliters in each of these uh, spray bottles and so the first step i'm going to do is weigh out the amount of no pept since i know each spray bottle sprays 175 times if i want each spray to contain one milligram of no pept i need to weigh out 175 plus 175 uh, gram a uh, milligrams of no pept which would be i do believe 350 milligrams of no pept so i'm going to go ahead and weigh out the 350 milligrams of no pept for the solution okay that's 100. Almost 200. Is it too much? There you go. Okay. 333. Yeah, I'm honestly that's it. There you go. And usually milligram scales, they keep fluctuating. Particularly this one, it fluctuates, but it's okay if you get within the ballpark. And I can go ahead and turn this off. The next thing you want to do is go ahead and add that to your vessel. And add it. Okay. You want to be careful not to spill everything. Usually tapping is good. But if you want to be extra careful, scraping is more uh, efficient. More accurate, I should say. Helps. Okay, so the next step is to weigh out the amount of preservative that you want to use. I'm going to go ahead and show you the calculations for it so you can figure out that amount. So the, for the amount of preservative that you need, if you're going to use benzyl alcohol, you want to first uh, go ahead and know that the percentage, you'll need 0.9% of benzyl alcohol for the entire solution. So to figure out how many milliliters that is, you go ahead and take the, the 40 uh, milliliters of the total solution, put that, put that under X, which would be the um, a n a number of mill milliliters for, of benzyl alcohol. And then that would be equal to 0 0.9 over 100, where 100 would be 100%, uh, and this is the percentage of benzyl alcohol. You go ahead and cross multiply. And then after you do, um, you do this multiplication and divide by uh, 100, you get 0 0.36 milliliters. So that's how much of benzyl alcohol you'd need for 40 milliliters of solution. Now for the methylparaben, we want to use it at a percentage of 0.1% of the total solution. 
The first step is to convert this to milliliters and then to milligrams. So for out of the entire 40 milliliter solution, we want to have it at a percentage of 0.1% over 100, of course. And if you do the cross multiplication, you get 0 0.04 milliliters. But remember, what I'm working with is the powder, okay? So if you want to convert that to milligrams, remember that one milliliter is equal to 1000 milligrams. So if we have one milliliter, which is equal to 1000 milligrams, if we want to find um, the amount for 0 0.04 milliliters that we found over here, how many milligrams would that be? We do the cross multiplication. And so we would get 40 milligrams. Okay. So now that we know that we need 40 milligrams of methylparaben as a preservative, I'm going to go ahead and weigh that out and add that to the uh, solution to be. Okay. And of course, go ahead and wipe off the ink cap that may be on your uh, tools and go ahead and weigh it out. Say how much is this? It's gonna be too much. I'm trying to be less. Because I think there's less versus easier. So that's 12. 20. That should be 40. Almost. And that should be enough for this. Yeah, it's not that strong. That's a better thing, it's actually kind of sticky. It looks like. Yeah, that's about 40. So this would be enough inside the bowl. There you go. Let's go ahead and add the methyl paraben to the uh, funnel. I should say flask. Now we finally just want to add in 40 milliliters of water. Yep, look for me, that looks like it's 40. Now I'm going to go ahead and stir the mixture and, um, using the magnetic stir bar and stirring machine okay, that I showed you guys before. It utilizes a variable voltage adapter. It goes from 12 volts to 3 volts. I'm, I would start at 3 and then move it up. So I'm going to go ahead and connect the adapter. Is that the magnet doesn't the magnetic field isn't exactly symmetrical. So I try to make sure that the magnet is centered first. Once it looks like the magnet is centered, I would up the voltage. Or I would leave it at this voltage. I'm just going to use some weights to hold it in place because I might vibrate just a little bit and move it off center. There we go. That's about it.
So I left it stirring for about two hours. And as you can see, all those particulates are gone. It's fully dissolved, but it did take quite a while, surprisingly. And I had this on the low setting for stirring. So finally, after the mixing, all you have to do is go ahead and pour the solution into the bottles. It helps if you have a stopper. I just used a lid of this um, nasal spray, but ideally you use an st uh, actual stopper, a stopper. So go ahead and pour in some of it. And I'll make sure I don't over pour it. That's how I was here. Go ahead and even up so it's equal amount of bumps. Looks all right. Yep, that looks good. And then all you have to do is go ahead and attach the heads of the nasal spray. See? And it helps you if you uh, end up pressing against this and pushing it in, you may damage the spraying mechanism. So you want to put in one of these clips and press it down. Like that. And these are ready to go. Just for the nasal spray you want to start with, you give it a spritz or two. One, two, three. And then it should uh, start firing fully. I'll go ahead and show you how it works. And so to use the nasal spray, go ahead and insert the nozzle of one of these in the nose, like that, like that, and you give it a small sniff to make sure that the no pep stays inside. So thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments below. I'd appreciate if you like and share this video and subscribe to my channel. Bye.